Hi guys, it's me Stace. I am back today to share with you guys a DIY project. I seen this idea on Pinterest and thought we would go ahead and give it a go. Looks like that. It is a treat holder that holds a little jar to hold the treats and also leashes. I make a mine for two dogs. You can most certainly use it for one dog. All right, what you're gonna need to get started is a piece of wood. This is just a scrap we had in the shed. Mine here measures three quarters of an inch in thickness by 14 wide and seven tall. I know if you go to a lumber yard in the back, they have uh, scraps of wood that were mess up cuts. You can always go there and you pick up a piece of wood your size, really cheap. All I do is paint the wood white and I went ahead and sanded it down. Now to attach everything, what we're gonna do, you need a mason jar. This is a one pint mason jar. It has the little lid and then the seal. And I'm, I want the lid, you don't have to use the lid, if you, the, the lid if you don't want to, but I wanna keep it on there to where the treats stay fresh and you know bugs don't get in it. Then to attach that to the piece of wood, you want to pick up a, um, a hose clamp. We got this at Home Depot. This is a four inch adjustable metal worm drive clamp. And you'll see it's very similar to like a dryer vent kind of thing. There's a little screw there. And the first thing you want to do is measure this on your jar. And it's gonna sit, there's a little lip here on the jar. That's gonna sit there and catch it so where the jar will stay on the piece of the wood. So the first thing you want to do is when you get your jar, put this on there, it's gonna be a little bit longer. Go ahead and tighten your screw all the way. You can use a flathead screwdriver or I recommend using a socket wrench. This is a uh, 5 16th inch socket wrench. You're gonna put this on there and make it nice and tight. And then you're gonna have a whole bunch of this extra metal. All we did was figure out how much we want, took our tin mold scissors and just cut it down. You wanna leave enough there to where you can loosen the jar and it won't, you know, if you do loosen all the way, that's gonna kinda get lost in there. So leave about maybe three quarters of an inch on there. And then what I did in the back, I marked where I wanted my jar to go, like, you know, laying it down. I measured, marked in the back with a marker. And then what I did to make it a little bit easier to attach it, because it was kinda hard to go through these holes. Because they're not really holes, they're like little lines. I then took my tin bolts again, and went in there where I see my marker and kind of wiggled that open to where there's a hole there so I can put a screw in it. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. So you're gonna put this on your jar when you get it home, tighten it all the way, cut off the excess, leaving, you know, when you have it tightened, leave it about an inch or three quarters of an inch of that metal showing. You can cut the rest of it off. Then you want, you want to have this screw showing. You can't, you know, you want to have it the, where the screw's facing you to where you can take the jar off the piece of wood. So have the screw on the left hand side, or right hand side if you're you know the other way um, but have that showing then mark in the back with a marker just you know wherever this is going to go mark right in the back where it's going to go against a piece of wood and then open them up with a um, something you know you can use a bolt scissors a screwdriver just something to make a hole there all right then i want to put this on my piece of wood i'm going to kind of put my little lid on it first so i can see where this is going to go that's going to go there centered i'm making like i said mine's for double then i picked up these um, code hooks. We got these at Walmart. The packaging looks like this and they're just the Hawthorne Place coat rack or coat hook and they were uh, 197 at Walmart. So a pretty inexpensive project other than the piece of wood. All right so they're gonna go there and then we're gonna do two paw prints here. First I want to make sure this is centered in my piece of wood roughly. Okay. I'm gonna hold this piece then take my jar off, okay, just to give me a rough idea where that's gonna go. I can see my screw mark or my screw hole there. Then take a screwdriver. And I lost my screwdriver. There, take a screwdriver and a screw. And this is just the itty bitty screw. All right, we're gonna put that on there and hopefully I can do this and we'll budget. I don't think you need to pre-drill it. The wood's pretty soft. I don't know what kind of wood this is because I said this was a scrap piece of wood. All right, so just make sure that is centered. I'm gonna measure that again. Measure twice, cut, measure, is that the same? Measure twice, cut once. All right, so that's gonna go there. I think it's pretty centered. All right, take this off. All right. Get that there. And if you wanna use a drill, you can. I think this screwdriver is too big for my thingy. I think it's much better. Okay, so my, my head might get in here. I think I'm going to screw that in. And I think just to get this screw started, ouch, and jab your finger. 
All right, so you just get the screw started. That, you know, like, it might be easier to pre-drill it. You just need to have the teeth of the screw kind of grab it. Okay, we're good. It's grabbing. All right, so get this in there nice and tight. Tight as I want to get it. All right, now I'm gonna actually loosen this up over here. Okay, so I can loosen that up, put my jar in there, okay, and then go ahead and tighten that up. Okay, then you can, of course, tighten it, make sure it's straight. Okay, then you can see this is gonna hold our jar there. All right. All right, guys, sorry about that. I had to hit pause. I did cut my finger when I jabbed myself with the screwdriver, so I do recommend maybe pre-drilling if you can. But the jar's on there. Now we want to go ahead and add our hooks. And I want to have my hooks centered from the jar to the edge of the wood, not too far over. So I'm going to kind of just eyeball it here, and I'm going to take my ruler and then measure it. All right, so I'm going to go from the top down. And I think four inches will be good for that part. And... Okay, we're going to go four inches down and two inches in. All right, so I'm going to hold that one there. I did go out to the shed and grab my drill, so hopefully this will be a little bit easier. And put this in there. Oh, much easier. Okay, so if you have, if you have access to a drill, I do recommend that. So I have the one in there, not horribly tight, just so I can make sure this is straight. And we're at two inches again. All right, put that in there. So I'm pushing it there to get a little hole there. And grab your drill. Okay, that's in there. Okay. All right, now this one over here, same thing. We're going to go four inches down. Four inches down. My oh, light's in the way. Hang on. Move my lamp. All right, four inches down, right there, and then two inches in on the, there. Four inches down. All right, we're good there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my screw in there, make a little divot. I may start with my screwdriver first. I'm straight and grab our other screw. So pretty easy, right? Get that guy in there. Okay, so what do you think? Right? Alright, all right, now I want to do now is add paw prints and I want to figure out my spacing for my paw prints as well. I have about five inches here and four inches. So I'm gonna maybe do a three inch paw print. Let's go ahead and go to the Cricut and do that. Alrighty guys, we're at the computer. You wanna to go to cricut.com slash design. You're gonna see this screen here. Upper left hand corner where it says account. To click on that, then click on sign in. Then you wanna enter in your email and your password. I do have a piece of black matte vinyl on my Cricut mat and on the machine itself, the dial setting is set to vinyl. All right, we're gonna go ahead and click on create new project. And left hand side toolbar, insert images. In that search box, we're going to type in the word Paul and see if any Paul prints come up. All right, there's a few. Some of them you need to pay for. We want the ones that are subscribed. There's one here. I'm going to click on that, insert the image. And you'll see there are other images attached to that, so I need to ungroup it to just we to where we just have the Paul print. So right click on it, click on ungroup. All right, so now I can delete all these pieces. All right, now I don't want the heart, so what I need to do now is hide contour. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click on that, hide contour, and click on the heart. That's gonna hide the heart and leave our paw print open. All right, so now we have our paw print. I'm gonna resize it. I'm gonna go to my edit panel so I can see my sizes. All right, so I'm at 3.58 in width by 3.52 in height. 
I think that should be good. All right, so I'm going to have that guy, top toolbar, click on copy, and then click on paste. So we'll have two of them. So they're identical in size. Let's go ahead and click on go. And I do want them a little bit farther apart. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to cancel that cutout. Yes, I want to cancel the cut. All right, I'm going to take my mouse and hover over both of the paw prints, sure they're both in a box. Go to my layer panel and click on attach. That way they'll be a little bit farther apart on our mat. All right, click on go. I right, see how they separated. All right, we're going to click on go down here. And we're going to go ahead and cut these out. I'll meet you back at the table and we'll finish up our project. All right, guys, we are back. We went ahead and cut out our vinyl. Let's take our vinyl back here. And what I'm going to do is take my scissors and just cut that away. So there's one paw print. And the other one. All right, then you can take some kind of a little weeding tool. I have um, this one here that came with the old Cricut toolkit. Lift up the vinyl. Right, so there's one paw print, good to go, right? And the other one. Perfect. Right, let's bring our thing back in. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is take, I'm using the clear trench tape. You can, you can get these on Amazon. I'm gonna actually take some of my jeans first and make it so it's not so tacky. this down on top of that. Get a good rub on that. I'm going to use my bone folder. Push this on there really well. Actually, I'm going to use the back of this thing right here. All right. Take this off. Make sure it grabs. Bring this guy back in. And then plop your paw print down. And you want to use something. I don't have. I don't have a credit card. I would use a credit card or something. Okay, it looks like it's pretty staying on there pretty good. Just be careful and go slow. Oh, see, I lifted that one up. Just a little bit more rub. Take my bone folder again. It's giving you issues like mine is, just rub it over it again and just go slow. It will eventually grab. If not, then kind of go in there and hold it down. Okay, there we go. You want to go slow, you don't want bubbles. All right, so we've got one done. Let's do the same for this little guy over here. Once again, take something. I'm going to use my roller this time. Okay. Take the backing off. Bring this over. Now, I'm not too worried about being the same height, but I do want to try to get close. I'm just going to kind of guess at it here. It's a pretty easy shape. Take something and rub it. Okay, and that's gonna peel this off. It's easier if you have the vinyl or the your transfer tape kind of laying flat with the board. Okay, that one right there is gonna give me an issue. Not a big deal. We'll go back and rub it. It's still catching, kind of just go there and hold it down. Really cute, look at that. How cute, right? Now that would make a really cute gift for a dog owner. I'm gonna go get some treats and I'll be right back. Hi guys, I'm back. I wanted to share with you what the back of this look like and how you can hang it on the wall. We just attached these picture hanger hooks, like the zigzag kind, just measured it down and on the end to make sure they were even. 
one on each side. Then I'll share with you how you go about taking that off. Now, like I said, there is a screw there. You can use a flat end screwdriver. It's a lot easier having a little socket wrench. This is 5 16 Going to loosen this up. Nice and loose to get the jar out. The jar is going to come out nice and easy. Now you're going to rinse that out, wash it off, put it back in there. When you put it back in, you want to make sure the lip of the jar catches on that metal ring, the hose clamp, and then go ahead and tighten that back. Nice and tight. Isn't that super cute? And pretty inexpensive. You know, the wood, like I said, if you don't have access to wood, you can go to the Home Depot or the lumber yard, Lowe's. In the back, they all have that scrap bin. Just find a piece of wood that you like. You're going to get it at, you know, a really good markdown. The hooks here at Walmart, they were two bucks a piece. So four bucks, four dollars for the hooks. And the clamp was at Home Depot was one thirty nine. The vinyl, we probably already have that. And um, you're good to go. And then the, the canning jar. But hope you guys enjoyed it. I think it's a really fun project. I think it turned out really cute. Um, as always, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.